It's hard to imagine a world without satellites circling overhead. Our daily workspace and living rooms are filled with communication tools made possible by the devices orbiting above us. Uh, what began as uh, satellite radio is now moving into new areas uh, like data and, and video for mobile users. Uh, high definition TV is really uh, pushing the existing satellite TV market. And the promise of HD is only part of the rising demand for satellites. The need for high-speed internet connectivity in remote areas is also creating new opportunities. Ethnic programming around the world has been expanding. Uh, HDTV has been expanding. But broadband uh, internet access is an important market. And as internet's becoming a must-have, not a nice-to-have, and high-speed internet is a, is a must-have. During the 60s, the space industry was bolstered by the success of the Apollo program. Now, private industry has joined the challenge and made space travel and the satellite industry sexy again. You wouldn't want to spend uh, $100 million to put up a $1,000 satellite. But if it only cost $1,000 to launch it, you can imagine the different types of satellites that uh, will proliferate. We worked with Sirius Radio for mobile radio to the car five years before the service was ever launched. So we, we are often on the cutting edge of new services because the infrastructure has to go up first. Space Systems Laurel has launched more than 50 of the current geostationary satellites and has a backlog of 18 more, including one slated to become operational for the 2008 Olympics in China. Some of the newer platforms will support as many as 150 transponders. Well, when I started, uh, satellites were small and ground stations were, were big, and it's the other way around now. These larger platforms are especially good for the direct-to-user satellites, the mobile radios, the mobile video the H high definition TV to directly to users. Those pla platforms could use as much power as we can put up. The unprecedented demand for satellites means a new generation of engineers is desperately needed to feed the worldwide appetite for 100 to 200 million dollar systems. Engineers who, until recently, had overlooked this industry as the computer world grabbed both the world's attention and its talent. It was challenging, I, I think, at least in this area, you know, in the late 90s, early 2000, uh, when, when dot-com was, was really hot. Um, but I, I think, you know, after that sort of settled down a little bit, um, it's, it's been easier to get people. We've hired about uh, 700 people in the last couple of years, uh, over 300 in the last year. They're mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, and in various specialties within those, those different realms, things like communications and propulsion and thermal and structures, uh, RF, and antennas. People like working in space. It's a knowledge business, and people get challenged in a lot of new ways. And we work with fun applications way early, uh, very early in the process. And we hire people who have um, somehow knew when they were four years old that they wanted to work in space-related activities. Satellite technology requires an intense engineering background. There are only about a dozen universities in the U.S. that offer the type of education essential to building a career in the industry. Among them, Stanford, Cornell, Cal Poly, and Washington University in St. Louis. The verdict on the talent base? Wow, they're really sharp. You know, it's the college programs today are, are just really understand satellites. They do so much. Uh, analysis, some of the programs build small satellites. We're looking for uh, engineers a little bit more so than, than uh, science and, and researchers. So we want people who have a strong academic background, but also demonstrate some, some hands-on experience, some practical knowledge, ability to solve problems and things of that nature. We also have a strong mentoring program once people are here also. You know, we, we have uh, courses that are taught by people that are in the company from uh, technical to finance to business. So we really try to make everybody understand the business and all the aspects of it. While the U.S. and Asia will continue to lead, a significant broadband initiative in Europe has brought new competition to the industry, giving skilled aerospace engineers sky-high expectations for job security.